Man, got around. OG7 back here. Hey guys, and just like what's been going on for the last few weeks up in here, back east, there's no victory and glory. I'm sorry I'm yawning. I don't get much sleep, man, because um, my mom's husband came home from the convalescent home or from the hospice, whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, now I'm, I'm doing his medication, his food, cleaning up after him. And um, then I'm doing my mom's medication, her food, uh, cleaning up after her, helping her get up and down the steps and in and out through her appointments and stuff. And um, while I'm not really getting a lot of sleep, but, you know, I'm not complaining. I'm just sharing with you. I apologize for yawning, but I'm very tired that I had to move into the guest room because the room I was in is the only room could accommodate a medical bed for her uh, husband. So, um... I don't have any victory and glory. I'm going to speak low because they're sleeping. But without further ado, I want to get into the topic of today's video, which is in maximum security prison, if you ride with your people, they will be the first to ride you like a pony. This comment is for a lot of youngsters. Come on here. You guys are inmates because you've been to level one, level two. You've been doing maybe 18 months or two years. To me, I don't consider you a real convict. This is my opinion. Until you're doing 10 years or more, it's nothing like doing a decade, dude, to really have you institutionalized, dude, and uh, desensitized to the violence and then uh, acclimated like the Borg in maximum security prison. You become a savage. There's no more humanity. It's all animalism. And then you're a convict. The rest of you youngsters coming on here with your little funky comment. No, man, always ride with your people. OG don't know what he talking about. Man, you ride with your people. You get soups and zoom zooms and wham whams and chips, man, and crackers, man, and tuna. You know what I'm saying? You get to play spades and poker. Yeah, okay, that's that level one, level two band camp, maximum security prison, man. Everybody's a savage. Most people are sodomites. The majority of people are perverts and demented. And they're looking for a weakness. Maximum security prison is the one place I've learned. Um, there's a, there was a saying in the 60s, never let them see you sweat. Man, never let them see you smile. Never let them see you be sad. Always have on a game face. Game face is like this. Look, guys. Like you never show emotion, man. You always got a scowl on your face. You just, like you're not happy. Maybe inside you're happy. Or maybe you're sad inside, but your game face... And it's like my homeboy Curtis Thomas used to tell me because when I first got out the pen, he had been out. He got out five years before me. I did ten, he did five. So he was already established, you know, doing computers and stuff. He was making money, living a good life. And he embraced me with love, man. He was like, he used to introduce me to women and jobs and opportunities. I love that dude. But he grew me from being a savage barbarian. He's the first one gave me the name OG Silverback when we was in uh, San Quentin prison. But he grew me from being a guerrilla savage in the jungle to becoming a sophisticated gentleman. And he gave me the name of Gorilla in the Suit. So what happens is um, he used to throw these socialite parties where, you know, people of money and influence would come over. You dress nice and you, oh, do you have any great poupon? I don't drink, but I would have like a Sprite dude or a 7-Up or something like that on ice on the rocks. And you just mingle and walk around. And he used to always tell me, oh, gee, sell back, leave your mask on because these people ain't ready for you to take your mask off. So then, after the social setting was over, he would have like these strip club parties where he'd have strippers there. We'd be start shooting pool, guys that's gambling because the sophisticated crowd would leave. Now here comes a hood type, thug type ninjas, right? Then they go, okay man, it's cool to take your mask off. So then I'd take it off because I'm around some thug type dudes. And I was doing security for his uh, strip club parties because some dudes, man, be paying these strippers and they drinking and they get, they're getting high. And then the stripper don't want to give them a private dash for whatever reason. It's their prerogative. And then they want to get unruly. And, 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 and Big Kirk be like, all right, man, take your mask off. So then I tell them, hey, my man, you got to leave the premises. So you can either eat, leave willingly or you can leave in a body bag. Makes me no difference. And I had already patted everybody down before they came to the venue. So I know they didn't have straps or uh, a knife or anything like that. Can't, let's call it a candy bar. So I'm just, I'm not bragging and I'm not, I'm not the baddest dude or the, the craziest dude, but I know I train every day. So I'm thinking the average dude 
even if he's trained, if you're smoking weed and you're drinking and I'm not, and you're smoking cigarettes and I'm not, I got the drop on you just because alcohol deadens your senses, slows your reflexes. So anyway, that's just a backstory. But getting to the title of this video, in maximum security prison, if you ride with your people, they will be the first to ride you like a donkey. Maximum security prison is really interesting. This is a movie called, I think it's called Lockdown or Lock Up. Just look him up, man. Lockdown or Lock Up. But it's about this black dude. He was a square dude. He was a swimmer. And he got into it. One of those is the one that the dude got into it with Fat Joe in New York, and he threw him. They was fighting, and Fat Joe fell down to where the subway comes. He got electrocuted and died, or the subway hit him. Or I think that's the movie. It's called Lockdown or Lockup. But it was a square dude, black dude, swimmer. He goes to maximum security prison for murder. But his homies was there from since when they when he was kids. Because you know how sometimes you always got some homies that just do questionable stuff. And you know them through sports. I, I knew this a lot. I had a lot of homies that I played sports with. But they was thug dudes, right? But I knew them. We worked out and played sports. But I didn't participate in their thuggish activities or gang activities. So anyway, he gets to the pen. His homies has been there since he was like 14. And this dude ain't never getting out. He got double life. So then he in there, and the first thing you do, hey, man, whoa, man, what you doing in here? You a square dude. Oh, man, this dude messed me up. He knocked my artwork down on the train. We got off the train, and I got to fight him. You know, I, I swim a lot. So, you know, when I, when I chucked them things on him, he fell down in the subway, and the subway ran him over. Now I got life. Oh, man, I look out for you, man. Here, here's some soups and some candy bars, man, and some zoom zooms and wham whams if you need anything. Here's some toothpaste, man, some soap. I got you. And then unlock come. They're not in the same cell. And then he's, they, hey, man, let's shoot some ball because they used to shoot ball in the street together. You know, they homies, man. And then they shoot ball. Hey, man, let's lift weights together, lift the weights. Oh, man, you need to step up your game. This is what the lifer told him because he's free people as a swimmer. But the lifer been in there chunking an iron. He's just chunking it, right? He said, man, you got to step up. So the lifer knew he was stronger than the dude. And then he started play wrestling with him. He knew he was stronger than the dude. So then, man, he, tell, he convinced him to move in the cell. Oh, man, you know, we, we from the same block. How's Freddie doing? How's your mom doing? How's your sister doing? Oh, they good on good, you know? All that kind of stuff. They're buttering him up. Then he gets up in there, man, and he said, hey, man, you want to look at some of these dirty magazines? And the guy's like, nah. So then the lifer dude's looking at the dirty magazines, and he start, you know how dudes start doing their knees in and out like that? So then he was like, Hey man, so uh, let me see pictures of your girl. So the dude showing him the swimmer showing pictures of his girl. So then he's leaning in close. He try to kiss the swimmer. The swimmer's like, "Hey man, what you doing?" He said, "Hey man, I ain't, I ain't never been with a woman, man. And you got the girlfriend and everything, man. I just want to know what it's what it's like to be with a girl, man. So just let me go up in." He's like, "No, I don't roll like that." He said, "Hey man." I be looking out for you. We play basketball together. Oh, he's lift weights. I'm trying to get you stronger. I gave you all them soups and everything. And dude's like, nah, I ain't with that program. He said, okay, okay. I see how you is. I see you is. So what I'm trying to say is, I want to explain to you youngsters. Maybe your people don't outright just take it because there's rules to the game. Whatever your set is or your collective group of people are, they're not just going to allow somebody to just straight take it. But they're going to try to do some guerrilla tactics, and they're going to try to do some covert persuasion. If that doesn't work, they're going to go overt. But those are the first people that, that, try, that try to tap your cheeks because then you can keep it on the down low. So I'm just saying, dude, like, just be very careful, man, because it's like this, dude. They're going to be the first ones to ride you like a pony, dude. And they're going to tell you they're just going to put the tip in. That's just the light. They just put the tip in for the first 30 seconds. Then they're going balls deep. Talk about Oklahoma, hold still, man. You know what I mean? It's crazy stuff. So you got to do this, man. You, you can't show fear and jump into the first car that offers you protection or offers you open arms, dude. You got to just be like, you got to be a man and take your time to really decide which car you want to be a part of. Even if you know somebody that's from your hood or from your street and your barrio and you ain't seen them for 10, 15 years, man. He's not the same person you knew, man. It's like, let's give you an example. Because you guys don't like the graphic, uh, the vulgar type of content because you're soft. You're soft soy boy. You spineless motherfuckers. 
So let's let's take it down a notch for you, you little soft baby boys. Let's say you got a girlfriend, man. And you know how men, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, you go through problems and you break up and stuff. And a girl be like, oh, I want to take a break. Or let's say you break up with your girlfriend, man. And you ain't been with her for about a year. Let's just make it easy for about a year. And then you run into her somewhere, man. And then, you know I me. Mean, she's like, oh, sometimes I think about you. You think about her. And you think about the good times. You forgot the bad times. You forgot the one. She was the one that left you. And you take her back. I've done this before. I won't. I don't do it again. But I'm telling you, young guys, when you take your girlfriend back and she's been gone for about a year or so, gone from the relationship with you, she's no longer the same girlfriend. She's been with five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different dudes, doing all kind of dirty, nasty stuff to her that you never did, dude. All kind of stuff, man. And now she's coming back damaged goods. So even though. She might want to get with you because you treat her the best out of the other dudes that was just dogging her and running through her. She's no longer the same girl. And it's just like when you see your homies, you go to the maximum security prison. And you see your homie, he's been down 10 years. Like, let's say he left when you was, y'all was 15. Now you're 25. He's been down flat. He ain't never getting out. He's not the, he's not the same homie, man. And he's going to have affections for you that you don't want. So if you like this type of content, man, thumbs up the video. Leave a comment in the algorithm if you know anybody or if you heard of any situation like this. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because I've noticed 25% of you guys that comment aren't subscribers. And I'm looking to get to 100,000 sub subscribers by the end of this year. Because once you get to 100,000 subscribers, the YouTube algorithm starts su suggesting your videos to more people and start putting your video into more different feeds because I think this is very important that young dudes understand this gang affiliation, this urbanized hood type of thug type of living dude. It might be glamorous when you're like 13, 14, 15 because you know you're going through puberty. Other guys are bigger and stronger. I got it. You want to be somebody. I got it. You want to feel like you got some power, some clout. I got it. You're afraid. I got it. But man, once you start hitting age 17, you turn 18, you got to look at your life and look at, do you want to be locked up in and out of reform school, in and out of maximum security prison, associated with funky, stinky, big, strong, murderous homosexuals? Or do you want to have a life, You get there's a fork in the road, do you want to have a life where you go to college, get a good job, work for a nice corporation, travel, have a nice girlfriend, heck, even maybe get married and have kids? The choice is yours. So until next time. Oh, she's so bad. Oh.